we're very pleased that um, so many of you are participating. Um, yeah, so okay, you restarted the recording. That's great. Um, okay, so. So I will first start by introducing myself. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anita, and together with Ugna, um, the girl on the uh, the blonde girl on the picture, on the right, um, I'll guide you through the evening tonight. Um, so I'm an international business student um, of HZ, and Ugna is a recent chemistry graduate um, from also of HZ University um, from Lithuania. Um, so in the framework of the honors program, we um, dealt with the topic of sustainable slash social banking and its impact. And together with the Thrive Institute um, and HZ, we were able to organize this Pur purpose college um, with our guest speaker Hans Stichemann um, from the Triodos Investment Management. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. So this is the agenda um, for this event. We will probably take around um, 45 minutes. So I, was, I will start by introducing you to the topic and tell you a little bit about um, the whole motivation behind organizing this question and answer session. Then um, the next item will be an insight into Ugnes and, mine, um, and my journey to Peru and Ecuador, um, exploring the impact of sustainable banking in these countries. Um, then I will um, let Mr. Sichemann introduce himself and um, introduce um, his work. And finally, Ugna will take over and begin the question and answer session. Okay, so um, yeah, why are we talking about social banking tonight? Um, well, personally, I've always been very much into sustainability. I, um, I try to follow the advices for a sustainable lifestyle, to have a small environmental footprint. Um, so I've been like a vegetarian since like forever and um, I'm like the typical Fridays for Future supporter, I would um, say, and so is Ugna. And um, yeah, so around two years ago, I stumbled across a website called Fair Finance International, which has um, developed a methodology for evaluating the credit and investment policies of um, banks and insurance companies across um, a range of different kind of issues and sectors. And the objective of Fair Finance is to enable consumers and um, policyholders to demand more socially responsible, fair and um, sustainable investments. So to be honest, I had um, never given much of a thought what exactly banks would um, do with their customers' money. So I was really shocked to learn that my own bank, um, where I was basically keeping my money for my entire life, um, was finding, financing the production of nuclear weapons, um, speculating with food prices, and basically hampering um, a transition to clean energy um, by investing in some of the largest fossil fuel producers worldwide, for example. So in fact, um, most banks primarily um, pursue economic goals, um, so high returns and not necessarily um, sustainability. But um, yeah, this was totally not compatible with my sustainable lifestyle and my own personal beliefs. Um, so in the framework of the Honors Program of the HZ University of Applied Sciences, which is um, all about the sustainable development goals, um, Ugna and I, we both became more and more involved in the topic of um, banks um, and sustainability. And we finally became aware of the Triodos Bank, which was um, also analyzed by Fair Finance. But in contrast to the other banks like ING or the German bank, um, Triodos scored very, very well. <laughs> um, yeah, so the honors program gave us um, the opportunity to explore the impact of social banking in Peru and Ecuador. Um, yeah, Ugna and I were very interested in especially financial inclusion and uh, microfinance. Um, so we visited a couple of microfinance companies um, in Peru and Ecuador. They received support um, by means of loans provided by the Triodos Fair Share um, and the Triodos Microfinance Fund. So both of these countries' um, economies are actually um, quite fast growing and they're starting to follow industrialized um, countries' examples. Um, however, in Peru, for example, um, only 29% uh, percent of adults have an account at a formal financial institution. 
most of the country's population is actually excluded financially, um, which was, a, on, to be honest, a shock um, <laughs> for me to hear since um, yeah, I had my first bank account open when I was 14. Um, yeah, so my, some of you may wonder why does financial inclusion, why is that so important? Um, yeah, the answer is quite simple. So with no access to formal financial services, it is really difficult. Um, for people to build up savings, to buy insurance, um, which makes households much more vulnerable to potential risks and, um, and shocks. And also um, small businesses can find it very difficult to find, um, sorry, to build um, assets or to obtain financing to increase their productivity, um, to expand or to hire more people. So in Lima, um, we had the chance to interview Accesso Crediticio, which is a financial um, services firm that plays a strong role in financial inclusion in Peru. Um, yeah, the, major the majority of the institution's um, clients, they're independent, low-income taxi drivers that um, otherwise would have very limited or no options to their own vehicles. And 70% um, of the clients um, actually do not even have um, accounts at other financial institutions and only one in five are opening an account um, for the very first time when they become customers. So Accessos um, focus is on providing um, taxi car loans, um, more specifically um, taxi car loans for compressed natural gas based taxis. <laughs> Um, the abbreviation for that is CNG based vehicles. Um, so CNG based vehicles, they're much cleaner and um, they're a more efficient alternative to fossil fuel powered taxis. And in Peru, uh, many taxi drivers actually have to rent very old cars that are um, not only ex super expensive in the long run, but um, also very polluting for the environment. So Accesso um, with their um, loans, they contribute to fighting climate change by reducing the number of um, uh, the cars circulating, uh, the cars, the number of polluting cars circulating in Peru while um, providing financial services to um, underserved customer groups at the same time. So the whole experience, um, yeah, it was a very touching experience for Ukna and me and it made us, made us realize that uh, the access to financial services is actually anything but a matter, of course, when it actually is so important. Um, yeah, so that was um, now the introduction um, from our side. And now I would like to give the floor slash screen um, to Mr. Hans um, Stichelmann, who is the chief, uh, chief investment strategist from Triodos Investment Management and who is so kind to be our guest speaker tonight. Welcome, Mr. Stegerman. Thank you. So at a certain point of time, and I think there are two points in my career when I realized um, it's more about values than about economics, uh, or economics is something different than only talk about profits and, and economic growth. Um, the first one, I, I was, I think, 24. I was working at a trade union in the Netherlands at the staff department. And we uh, reorganize, so we negotiate with the employers on behalf of, uh, of, of the employees. And we had an agreement, and it was my task as 24-year-old, uh, uh, just uh, graduated uh, person to explain to the, the members of the union um, that the retirement scheme, that it meant that they had to uh, work longer. So the retirement age was, uh, uh, was later. And I, th I prepared a very well presentation, at least I thought. Um, and um, uh, so I was starting my presentation. And the only question the people had in the audience was, from what age do we have a guarantee that nothing changes? Uh, and I said, yeah, that's 50. And then they said, OK, that's OK. And they began to drink beer at the bar because it was not uh, they were all over 50. There's a typical union membership. And then I realized if I want to change something in, in the society, I should not be at a trade union. So I moved to a government agency and did research. And the second uh, one was in the financial crisis, uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago, I worked at Rabobank and my job was to give presentations to clients. 
And as you might know, um, clients who come at this evenings organized by banks are mostly clients who have money. And so I gave a presentation. This is the more, most severe re recession since the World War, etc. So this is terrible. And they all, all stared at me and said, that's not what we want to hear. We want to hear how we can earn more money because they had, didn't have any problem. And then I realized, yeah, if I really want to study economics and want to understand the world, then it's not about only about money. It's in, in essence, it's about values. It's about what you want to achieve. Uh, and a few years later, I moved to Triodos um, because I think that's the essence of Triodos is being a values-based bank. That's what how we call it. Um, and you can, and what we try to do is based on that values, which are ecological values, values social values, try to, uh, as we call it, change finance and finance change. So on the one hand, the practical part, I would say, is like you saw in Peru, is uh, finance change, finance sustainability, finance entrepreneurs or companies that are more sustainable, who are the front runners, uh, who show that we can do different things. And on the other hand, and that's also part of my job, uh, change finance. So to write about it, present about it, giving a different picture about the economy, show that different things are uh, important, also thinking about it. Um, and that's that's my role. So th that may be that as an as, a, as an introduction. Thank you so much, Anita and Hans, for introduction. So hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. I am uh, I'm Ogna, for those who don't know me yet. And I'm going to be taking over the Q&A part. So Anita and I have prepared some questions that we would like to ask Mr. Stierman. And we found them very interesting and we hope you will find them too. And if we don't ask the question that you wanted to ask, uh, don't be shy, write it in the comment section. And at the end of the Q&A, we will have some time left over and we will try to ask as many questions that you had for Mr. Stigman as possible. So right now, I'm going to start with the Q&A. So the first topic I would like to discuss with Mr. Stegeman is Triodos company's profile. Mm -hmm. So the first question would be, how did the Triodos project start and what was the trigger, the motivation behind it? Yeah, I I was not there at the start of Triodos, uh, of course, because Triodos exists now for 40 years. At, at least it, it, it is a bank for since 1980. But the initiative started earlier, already in, in the late 60s, um, for people, uh, mostly from the financial sector, started to think, how can we do things differently? How can we finance other things in a different way than we were used to? And they were also inspired by Rudolf Steiner, uh, the anthroposophic movement, um, which gives always a holistic way of looking at things. If you know something about uh, Rudolf Steiner and, and, and anthroposophy, it's still in uh, part in the core of, of Triodos. Um, so in 1980, we got a bank license in the Netherlands uh, and started to do uh, retail banking, so business banking, financing, uh, mostly small and mid-sized enterprises, and later on also having a bank bank accounts for for private bank for private clients um and we moved on uh, in the 90s we started also with uh, with investments uh on the request of our clients so we had banking activities and then we started with investing both um on the equity markets and, and bond markets so on listed companies so in, in large companies with the idea that if you also invest in those companies, you can steer a little bit in a, in a sustainable direction. We started, like you've seen, with impact investing already in the 90s and what we call impact investing, that's microfinance, what you saw, financial inclusion. We started also with an energy fund. So uh, the first windmill in the Netherlands was financed by Triodos in 1986. Um, and we also moved to different countries. We moved first to Belgium in 1993, uh, in the UK in 1995, uh, in Spain and in Germany. So we're active in those countries now. 
uh, and we call ourselves a, a mid-sized European bank. Um, and our um, way of doing things is, like I said, is finance change, change financed. Um, it's about our values, and it's also about and and we really want to to build um, uh, not only a, a customer relation, but a kind of, of of group or a movement, I would say. So. Uh, if you join us, you join the movement of uh, spending your money consciously. And also, if you look at our commercials in the Netherlands, but we had uh, our first European campaign uh, last year. It's also about, at the moment, about reset the economy. How can we rebuild after COVID-19 uh, the economy in a more conscious and a more sustainable way? So that's what we do. Um, and we do it with, uh, I think, uh, around... 16, 1700 people in Europe. Um, so, and our, our banks are in Europe. Investment is worldwide, as you saw. As, um, and we have clients, but our client base is, is mostly in, in, in Europe. Um, since we are part of the financial sector, we always have to struggle between trying to change things and also comply with the rules of the system. And that's always the, the challenge we have, uh, to be honest, uh, because we are within the financial system. And as you know, over the last 10 years, we have even stricter regulation every every year, new regulation on the financial sector, and we have to comply with it. And it makes it sometimes very difficult because we want to change. We want to finance change. And sometimes financing change does not fit into the regulation of uh, the um, of the Dutch central bank, and and there we go to the limit and try to 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 move on. So maybe that as a as a short. If you have any question, please ask about the other side. Yes. So the uh, thank you so much for your answer. And the next question I have for you is, what does Triodos stand for? Triodos. Um, yeah, there are a lot of stories, but it's 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 just. Th you you can it's it's the threefold way it's from three hodos from from the greek uh, word and uh, you can also translate it sometimes more the popular version is uh, people planet profit uh, but what we like to do is is see those three different values and 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 i must be very precise sometimes it's about social cultural and human life sometimes it's about ecological social and financial uh, but there's always three, and that's that's the way to remember. Um, and and the essence is, uh, we often talk about the essence, uh, is that it is a holistic way of seeing the world. And um, that's where we stand for. And, and that's also, if you look at sustainability, for instance, um, we try to approach it really in a holistic way. And, and the most concrete example is, um, if you know the sustainable development goals, as were also in your previous slide, um, you have companies and uh, firms that says we contribute to SDG three health or to SDG one, and we always say it's complex, it's a holistic concept, the sustainable development goals, and you cannot take one out of it, because if you maybe contribute to one, you distract from another. So you must always give the total picture. And that's also what we try to do when we finance, when we invest, take the holistic picture, the three hodos, so the three roots of seeing where your money goes. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but that's the way we see it. Yeah, th thank you. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, for the next topic, I would like to focus uh, is uh, to go a little bit more into depth about social bank uh, business model. So for our first question, I would like to ask what is, in your opinion, sus uh, sustainable finance? Yeah, what sustainable finance is. Um, it's 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 uh, first uh, it's a moving target, sustainable finance, because um, I'll give you one example. Um, if you know anything about sustainable finance, it's all about ESG investing. And, and uh, if you look um, into the financial sector and what other companies do, uh, you can do sustainable finance by saying, I do, I exclude the worst. And it can be weapons or nuclear or whatever. 
porno, whatever, gambling. Uh, and you can call that sustainable finance. Uh, you can also say we use ESG factors, so environmental, social governance uh, factors, and all companies are ranked according to that. And we use it to optimize our portfolio. So we don't exclude per se, but we we use it as a kind of a risk factor. You can also say, now we only take the, the, the best in class, so only the top scorers on, on ESG. Um, and we did it all. Astriados. We started with excluding in the 90s. We did uh, used ESG ratings, and we did, um, and and we took only the best, so the best in class. Um, so that's all what you still see as sustainable finance. But what we try to do now is to move on. Um, and I think the end point is uh, having financing only that what contributes to a sustainable world, and that's very ambitious. And because that means uh, if you realize that our world is completely non-sustainable, you also know that most companies are also very non-sustainable. So you, you can then only be very selective in what you want to invest. And for me, that's the ultimate goal of uh, sustainable finance, only financing debt that contributes to a more to that sustainable world. So within planetary boundaries and also with the social threshold. That that is the end goal. So that's a long question about sustainable finances. Um, and um, yeah, I, I really want to set it also to you. Um, the proof of the pudding is in, in eating it. If you invest in something, you most of you will not have the money, but suppose. Um, and you invest in a fund and they call it a sustainable fund. You can always ask in which companies do I invest? And if they come with a list with a lot of fossil fuel companies and other companies, you know it's not sustainable finance. So in the end, it's always looking at what is actually financed. And um, most people often forget. And this this is so simple, but most people don't. In the end, also, what is so? This is the sustainable finance answer for the financial sector. But the sustainable finance answer for you is where do you spend your money? And do you do it consciously or do you do do, do you even care and, and and my answer if you don't care and if you just spend your money whatever the consequences you are yourself not doing sustainable finance so that's the the the, the, the personal part i think of uh, sustainable finance that's very interesting answer thank you so much and for the next question um i would like to say that Many of us, uh, I used to be as well, um, a client at the conventional banks. So for instance, like ING or SCV. So what in your opinion are the big the key differences to conventional bank business model compared to social banks business model? Yeah, maybe um, before that, um... Social banks isn't uh, what what we at Tridos call it is we are a member and also one of the founders of the Global Alliance of Banking on Values, and that's um, I think I, I don't know I think in more than forty banks world globally are are member of those banks, and um, so that's you can call it social banking. So if that's the definition of social banking, uh, but to become a member we have a scorecard. And in that scorecard, we say uh, only if you get that many points, I think 50 or 60 on that scorecard, you are social. And, and that might be a definition of what is social banking. Uh, we look at the balance sheet of a bank. That's a start. So if a bank like ING um, is making more money from money, so having a lot of derivatives and other products on the balance sheet, um, financing in the financial sector itself instead of the real economy, uh, that's a problem for us. Because we think the use of money should be directed at the real economy. So you should real use it for real economic activities. So to uh, finance SMEs, finance mortgages, etc., etc., and not like a, a large part of the balance sheet uh, from, from a lot of banks uh, investing in the, in the financial sector itself. So that is, that's one part of the definition of uh, social banking. Another part is um, if you finance something as a social bank, 
you must from the start ask the question what uh, is the goal what do i i achieve with financing or investing in this uh, company or project and sometimes the answer is not that clear because you don't know but at least you should ask the question and have an opinion what the effect will be um, and 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 this is not always um clear to see but but maybe on the on the retail banking side for mortgages what we do we ask also the energy use of uh, the house so we so in in Malaysia have energy labels for house uh, for houses and if you energy label is higher so uh, better uh, energy uh, more energy efficient house and then your interest rate is lower so we reward people who are more sustainable. Also, we try to do it with uh, business banking. Um, and and so there is no standard definition. That's what I want. It's all a moving target, social and sustainable. Um, but it, it's about consciousness. It's about knowing what you're doing. It's about making decisions. And it's about financing the real economy and not the financial sector itself. Um, so that's... That that is still maybe a little bit vague, but um, I think that's good that it's not clear, and it's also in the opinion of the customers in the end uh, that they have to understand the difference. So does that help that question? Of that yes, answer? Thank uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, so for our next question, it will be more like a statement actually. Um, so while I um, and Anita, we were doing the research for about the social banking. We came across this myth, which states that there is a conflict between social banking models and financial return. So basically, this means that many uh, think that social businesses are less profitable. Would you say that is true or false? And could you a little bit co uh, comment on that, of course? Um. Uh, as you might expect, um, it's in the middle. Um, what what we can see, um, and and there are, there are a few things um, to to say on it. What is in general now, I think, quite known is that more or companies who give more attention towards sustainability in their businesses, in their governance, etc. So those ESG factors. Uh, are in general also more resilient. So they cover a lot of risks by uh, addressing sustainability issues. And But for me, that's the negative part, but still, that, so that means, and that's also what you see in the financial sector, that, that sustainability factors are used for risk mitigation. So sustainability leads to resilience. And we saw that also last year as, as a very positive factor. Um, on especially the um, uh, i think the, the retail banking side so the business banking um, sustainable as a means uh, with a, the same business model uh, exactly the same business model so, so you have a, a more sustainable restaurant uh, with vegan food or a normal restaurant there it really depends on the entrepreneur and 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 what they exactly do so there, there it is difficult to say in general it is better or worse. Um, but my belief is, um, and that has to do with my endpoint, that sustainable world, I see no other option that the world has to become more sustainable uh, in the long run. So also if you have talk about long run investments, for instance from pension funds, it is quite... Um, and you only have one possibility to invest in those companies that are resilient to a transition or that contribute to a sustainability transition. So in the long run, I don't see any other conclusion that sustainability will be rewarded. Um, th this is how I sell my products, as you might know, but um, I really believe it if you think about it. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, so for the next topic i would like to get more into is environmental protection and social impact of social banking so for that i think for most the clients of, of a bank it is really important to know where their money goes so for this um i would have a question for you how 
transparency is assured in the Chiudos investment management. And what, what you can see on our website is where your money goes. You can also see it on the banking website. Uh, so if you have savings in our savings account, you can see where we finance um, uh, different uh, companies in, in the Netherlands. You can also see it on the investment management side. You can see what we finance where in the world with a short description. And we try to be as transparent as possible. Um, but there's also a limit, I must add, to transparency. What what we used to do also in our in our investments, in, in our um so in our listed investments, so in equities and bonds on the stock market, we used to publish the whole list of companies we were invested in because we thought we should, should we we must be as transparent as possible. But what happened once we published the companies we invest in, it is copied by other companies, by other uh, asset management managers. They replicate our funds and sell it for less money. So there's a limit to transparency because of how markets behave. Because yeah, we also have to compete with other companies. <laughs> so so what 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 happened? We did research on the companies: are they sustainable enough, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and then our research was uh, for free on the website and everyone could copy it and make a, a cheaper product out of it. So that's where we stopped. So we publish it for the listed funds only afterwards where we are invested in. But for the rest, it's completely transparent. Thank you so much for your answer. And so um, uh, Triodo's uh, business um, uh, Jira's investment management invests in quite a lot of projects and businesses. So what are the criteria for projects and businesses to be financed? Oh, we have um, we have a whole list. Uh, we have a, a positive and a negative list. The positive list starts with impact. Do we see, like I said before, do we see any positive impact of those investments? If you talk about what, what you've seen in Peru, it's about uh, financial inclusion. And then we try to see how many people we can reach by that investment, how many people we can finance and, and include them in, in society, or how many, especially women, we can, uh, women entrepreneurs, we can reach in emerging markets. So that's very concrete talking about impact or how many windmills we can finance or solar panels we can finance. So that's really on the impact um, on what we call the private debt and equity. So that's most private investments. Um, on the, the listed side, we really look at the contribution towards uh, sustainable development goals in an, as I said, in a holistic way. So, but also the negative consequences of the of um, what companies do. So our criteria, the first criteria is always doesn't have positive impact. Otherwise, we don't look any further. The second one is what is bad about the company. So why should we exclude a company? And especially uh, on the, the the stock market, if you invest in very large companies, um, you must not only look at the good part, but also at the bad part, because they always have a story why they are good. And to, to give one concrete example, that's what everyone knows is Tesla. Uh, we started to invest in Tesla when it just came onto the market. Um, because it makes electric cars, electric cars, positive impact. And if a company just started, they don't have any policies, all the policies, and you cannot expect from that company that they have all the policies in place, that they uh, know exactly their supply chain, where the cobalt came from, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, when uh, Tesla grew bigger, uh, we always ask questions to companies uh, to know uh, how they, in, in this case, their critical materials come from, about remuneration, so about the salary of Elon Musk, for example. Um, and in this case, we didn't get any answers um, because, yeah, they thought, well, we're good. And so why care? Um, and uh, so there became more controversies, especially about the cobalt, what you need for the um, uh, for the accu, for the, uh, how do you call it? The battery. Uh, so uh, in the end, and, and the salary of uh, Elon Musk went through the roof. Um, and we have a limit on that because social inclusion is also about uh, equality. And there's a, there's a limit to the remuneration of a CEO of a company, even if he's the founder, even if it's a big success and he, he can make rockets, whatever. There's a limit to it. And if a company does not respond to that kind of questions, 
uh, we divest. So in the end, we I think two years ago, uh, it's a pity for our financial returns, I have to say, but we divested in uh, in Tesla because we didn't get any answers to the question. And we think it's also, it's not only about what companies do good, but also about what what we think is not good. So the, a few examples, I can talk for, for ages about equity. <laughs> we have a lot of criteria um, so we, we look uh, on, on human rights issues, for instance, uh, in the fast fashion sector, living wages for workers in, in East Asia is an important topic, of course. Or we're looking now in the U Uyghurs who, who do cotton, etc., and also in clothing industry. Um, deforestation, uh, biodiversity, um, we have exclusion, strict exclusion criteria on nuclear, on fossil, on fur, on... Um, alcohol, no, not alcohol, but but uh, tobacco. Uh, we have a nuanced position on cannabis because you see a lot of cannabis producers going also through the market, and cannabis is not all bad. It's also a medical use, so it's it's a lot of those items. And and what normally happens is that it is never black and white. It's most of the time we have, and that's always on Monday, we have a team meeting and then we have big discussions. Uh, if we analyze a new company, is the positive impact good enough? Because that's sometimes fake. And is uh, what we call the, the, the negative in our exclusion criteria, is it clear what they do? Um, do we have to ask extra questions? And if we ask, uh, do we get answers to that? And if it not completely complies to our minimum standards, should we start engaging with them? So ask questions and see if they can improve on that. So, and, and that's what normally happens. That that's, that's a big part of the work we do. Okay, thank you so much. Um, since we are running out of time, I'm going to ask my last question right now and then give a word to Anita. She's going to ask a little bit more about the taxonomy so my last question for you is what is your personal uh, favorite project in the Trudeau's investment management oh I don't know all the projects that's the problem um and and as I said it's it's not all it's not all projects it's also investments and I'm uh, more involved in the investment side but the the project I like the most is not because we have another part of the bank we have Trudeau's investment management we have Trudeau's bank but we also have the Treat it as regenerative money center. So that's that's gift money. So so we can do subsidize more or less uh, projects with it. And we have a new project. It's called Aardpeer. Uh, it's it's in the Netherlands. And what we in es essentially did is that we bought land, uh, and we make it possible for farmers to. Uh, have uh, uh, organic farms on the land and they don't have to have such a big return because we we gave more or less the land to the commons, so to society. So that's a way of creating new business models, so making it more acceptable uh, for, for farmers to, to be organic, using money in a more conscious way, so not making a return, but giving it in a, essentially back to society. And I, I this just knew and I really liked the project. And this is also a project, and that's also why I like it, because it did not fit into any regulation. And I think that's the role that we try to do also to change finance and finance that, that change. Yes, Anita, can you hear? Yeah. Yes, sorry, <laughs> I just had to turn on my microphone. Uh, okay, well, thank you. Um, yeah, I would like to address um, another topic, um, which would be the last topic um, to address, um, which is the EU taxonomy um, regulation. Um, so for those of you who don't know um, what the EU taxonomy regulation is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Sichemann. <laughs> um, so basically it sets out um, a EU-wide framework um, according to which um, investors and businesses can assess um, whether um, certain economic activities are um, sustainable. Um, yeah, so basically I think um, it's mostly about environmental sustainability and not about the social um, aspect. Um, but yeah, I thought um, this was really interesting because it's just from, it's a new regulation from June 2020. And um, well, I think it will not come um, 
in effect uh, before 2022. But uh, I would like to ask you, Mr. Sichelmann, um, what do you think uh, will be the um, effect of this new regulation um, uh, on Triodos, but just on the finance sector in general? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, now maybe to uh, there, there's a lot of regulation on sustainability in Europe, and mm -hmm. in general, uh, we really welcome it because it helps also for clients to see what's the difference between what I call real sustainability and and sustainability washing or greenwashing. Um, and as you always see with European regulation, it's a compromise. So of course, for us, it's not strict enough. Um, and what's really missing in a taxonomy is, and that's a threat, that is really watered down and that some products can be called sustainable while they're in essence not. So that's a threat and, and, and there's still a discussion going on how it can be toughened, etc. That's very important. And what I also miss in the taxonomy is, okay, it's explained what is sustainable, but it should also help is clearly defined what is non-sustainable. Mm -hmm. So green assets are uh, uh, are um, are marked, but also the brown assets, as we call them, so the negative part, should also be very clear, be be defined. So that's missing. Um, what we are currently looking into it, and nobody knows exactly how it will play out, but we are looking, we comparing the kind of regulation to our products, and I, I think uh, we are definitely sustainable. We see no problem, um, but I think. So I see a lot of opportunities <laughs> to sum up to, to no more regulation, but there's also a threat of the lobby, uh, a real severe lobby of, of mainstream finance parties that water it down. And then it becomes a threat also for us, because then a lot of mainstream parties said, well, we are sustainable. We are as sustainable as three of those. And then we have a problem. So we always have to explain why we are different. And then it helps if regulation is very strict on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I also um, I read a lot about criticism from many NGOs like Greenpeace, WWF that uh, were saying, yeah, those um, the regulation is way too vague and um, doesn't really define, yeah, as you said, like unsustainable um, practices and so on. Yeah, um, yeah, that was actually the only um, question that I had. Um, uh, on this part, um, we have a couple of questions in the um, message uh, in the chat. Um, if you don't mind, I would just read out uh, or choose. A I think we've already covered some of them. Um, but, uh, um, maybe, OK, I will just choose this one here. Um, so, do you have a position on the debate about BlackRock investment and Oatly? Mm -hmm. Maybe do you know um, something about that? Um, BlackRock and I have an opinion on BlackRock, but what was the topic? <laughs> I have a general opinion on BlackRock. Yeah, it's um, BlackRock. Um, Oat, do you know Oatly? Oatly is the um, oh the yeah 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 that's the oat milk <laughs> and these kind of things. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I know people who uh, no, but th this is typically BlackRock. BlackRock has seven seven trillion, I think, uh, on investments. So that's 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 really a, a mountain. Um, so they're into everything. Um, and I was sitting in a podium, yeah, it's a, I think a year ago, um, in in a debate uh, next to a guy from BlackRock, and he said, yeah, we have a whole uh, sustainability department consisting of ten people. And then I said, uh, yeah, uh, we're much smaller, but we have a whole sustainability uh, bank. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then it was clear what the difference was, because they have seven trillion and only 10 people busy with sustainability. And um, Oatly, uh, is this greenwashing? No, I th BlackRock is very simple. If clients want sustainability, they provide sustainability and they, did, no, they try to do what the client's wishes. Is that greenwashing? No, that's answering cl client's wishes. Is that a sustainable company? No, that's completely not a sustainable company, but they don't care. And that's the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, okay, Yuri had a question here as well. Um, if you could change one thing in the financial system to stimulate a more sustainable society, what would that be? Oh, one thing. I get only one thing. Yeah, that's not enough. 
Um, um, it's about it, it's it's in the end it's about um, this is the most difficult thing. It's about values and the paradigm. Mm -hmm. If you talk with people in the financial, and also I think that relates to the second question of Yuri also, um, the financial best piece of financial advice for students, it has to do with values and with the paradigm you're in. If you think that being a finance student or working in the financial sector is all, only about making money, I think that's the wrong way. It's about steering capital or money in such a way that it can be as productive as possible for society, and then you will earn a long-term return. Otherwise, it's just bullshit. And bullshit can hold up for quite uh, quite some time. So we have uh, uh, a lot of bells in. Uh, so it's possible for a long time, but in the end, they all burst. Mm -hmm. Um, so also, if you work in the financial sector, it's also about values, conscience, and 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 adding social value with uh, how you steer the money. If it's giving a person a mortgage, always ask the question: Is it good that he gets it? Is it not not too high? And also with a company, it, is the business model of any use? And if I look at what co what what banks finance, and I see a lot of um, before. Corona, uh, a lot of cafes or, or juice bars or whatever, and every time the same. And I always ask myself the question, what is the added value of another of, of such a juice bar that cannot be, from a societal perspective, it's of no use, and from a financial perspective, it is, I think, also very stupid. Don't they have any better ideas? So that's not an advice, that's what I think. <laughs> Uh, that's a good advice, I think. <laughs> um, okay, I over saw some questions here. Um, well, there was one question um, regarding the process of changing. Well, we're already gaining some new clients here um, from ING or Rabobank to um, Triodos Bank. So I guess it's about uh, if you provide a service um, uh, to. Uh, Change. Yeah, it's uh, in, in the Netherlands, it's just uh, a website, um, overstopper.nl or something like that. Um, you, you can just switch very easily from one bank to another. It's it's very easy. Sorry, I did it myself from Rabobank where I used to work to Triodos. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> okay, and I think there was one more. Um, Yes, if you have any kind of projects related to financial literacy. Um, and do you observe a lot of interest from the younger generation? Yeah, uh, on, on financial liter literacy, um, not that many, to be honest. Um, and I think it's an important topic. And in my time at Rabobank, we, we did that. Um, not that I did it, but Rabobank does it. Um, we do it not in the Netherlands. It's a little bit strange for traders. We do, we do financial inclusion everywhere, <laughs> but in the Netherlands we 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 a little bit miss that point. I think sometimes too much. And I always try to be very transparent and honest. And I think we should do more. Um, and the second part of that question: Do you observe a lot of interest from the younger generation? Yes, definitely. And I think there's a movement uh, where traders is part of of also young people who really want to change society. And like I said before, uh, what we try to be is more a movement than only a bank. I think you can change only the world a little bit if you are more than, if you have a different relation with your clients and them only being clients. They have to be kind of fans and you have to be in a movement and want to achieve something. Because only a, a, a client relation is, that's exactly what when it goes wrong. So you don't care about each other. And that that has to be fixed. Um, so there are a lot of young people, luckily. Okay, and I think then the very last question would be um, from Eliana. Is Triodos also a participant or only a promoter of a circular economy? Uh, both. Um, we invest in, in circular economy uh, companies. Mm -hmm. um, we are busy at uh, also, I, as a person active in in in, in advisory boards, etc., circular economy, um, 
but we take it in a triodos way very holistically. And uh, mm -hmm. what we observe sometimes is that um, so you 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 should uh, be very careful to call with everything what is circular economy that is always sustainable, because you can use circular principles and not being sustainable. So we always start from the sustainability side. If you take the example of swap feeds, you, I think a lot of you know it. Um, it is uh, perceived as being a circular economy kind of business model because it's product as a service and that's typically circular economy. But if you look into the business model and how many f bikes are getting lost or are not repaired, uh, so the waste in the business model is no less than if people buy a bike. Mm -hmm. So I really doubt the sustainability effects of swap feeds in this case, to give a very concrete example. And we always approach it from the sustainability side. So we want to see what it delivers. Also, our new office, which uh, we built and where we have almost not sit since <laughs> since we moved in, <laughs> so uh, late last year, uh, late the year before, uh, is completely circular. So uh, all wood, uh, also all uh, able to reconstruct it, etc. So we really believe that circular economy principles can be used to have a more sustainable society, and that's where we invest in, and that's what we support. But we're also critical. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, well, I think that was the last question. So if there are no further questions, I would like to thank you very much. Um, for your insightful, um, uh, for this insightful um, question and answer session, um, yeah, I think. And thank can... you all for coming <laughs> as well. Yeah.